and welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I'm Natalia Winkleman, and I'm joined by... Matt Passantino. And we are here to talk about Tribeca, which we have been attending for the past couple of days. Um, and yeah, we're really excited. There's been a lot of great movies. Um, so, you want to start it off? Sure, yeah. I got a, I got a good crop of movies this year so far. I'm, um, I saw... I don't know, I have lost count. <laughs> but um, I saw... My favorite so far has been Tully. Have you seen Tully yet? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I really liked Tully. Were you there on uh, the premiere or whatever? With him, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I worship the movie Young Adult, and yeah. I just think it's so dark and mean, and I just, like, that's my kind of thing. And Charlize Theron is, you just forget that, like, Charlize Theron is an amazing actress. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget because, like, she'll, like, pop up in, like, floor-length dreads and Fast 8 or Furious 8 or whatever it's called. One right. of the, the eighth <laughs> one. And um, she's just an amazing actress. And I, I, I like, I absolutely was fell in love with Tully. I just thought it was so good, and Diablo Cody, like, it was like the best of what she does, and I, I think that like it had the sharpness of Young Adult, but was a little more, you know, it, it, you know, played into like real life. You know, obviously I'm not a mother, but <laughs> it kind of felt like it really played into the anxieties and the frustrations and the joy of uh, being a mother, and so I, I really love Tully. Yeah, that one I thought was really interesting, also because. I mean, Reitman, after the movie, was kind of talking about how he and Diablo think of um, Juno, young adult, and Tully as a kind of a trilogy or a spiritual trilogy. And I think that's really interesting also, and especially because they are such female movies. I mean, it's like they really capture a kind of a specifically woman-centric experience, um, but in, yeah, in this really beautiful, specific, particular way. Um, but yeah, I also thought it was pretty hilarious. Uh, uh, funnier than the other two, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Or funnier than Juno, I guess. Juno was kind of quirky yeah. and funny, but yeah. 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 And she and Charlize, um, yeah, she can just totally transform herself. I mean, it's someone, he was, I guess, Reitman, after the movie, was talking about how she'd basically come right off of Atomic Blonde when she came to shoot. And it just is such a different role. It's, it's right. almost mind-boggling that it's the same human being right. in both of those two roles. <laughs> You know, she's, like, become, like, the bona fide, like, action star of right now with, like, Mad Max. And I thought Atomic Blonde was pretty rad. But, like, I mean, she's also one of our finest actresses. And I just feel like, you know, if you... I have, you know, the DVD of Monster has the great Roger Ebert quote. Charlie Zeron gives, like, one of the greatest performances in, like, in the history of... Sound, and that's not wrong. Like, that is not wrong at all. Like, that Monster performance is an all-timer. And um, so I just, you know, that and Young Adult and this, I just feel like that she does, you know, these fun action popcorn movies and then she, you know, shows us what a range she has as an actress. So that's definitely been my highlight so far. Yeah. What other ones have you enjoyed so far? Uh, I really liked um, Stockholm. Oh, yeah. So I didn't really know. I didn't really know that it was a true story, but it's like kind of like the, you know, they, they in the beginning they kind of tell you like this is the phrase, uh, you know, Stockholm syndrome and what it means, and um, and it's about a bank robbery. So like it's a very familiar like bank robber movie, but like it's just got such like a mad energy to it. And Ethan Hawke is like playing to the back of the theater, having so much fun doing it, and he's so good at it. Um, I wrote this review for us, and I was like, and I said, you know, Ethan Hawke is so underrated. I mean, he's got this, like, everyday realism to him, like, with the Before trilogy and Boyhood, which I love so much. But but he also has, like, fun playing these, like, zany, crazy, over-the-top, like, characters. And so he plays this bank robber who's a terrible bank robber. Like, he has to be reminded, don't you want money? You're robbing a bank. So he kind of goes in with his own agenda, and so we kind of see that all unfold over the course of... Uh, it's over a day, and um, and so that was a lot of fun. Um, I saw Disobedience. Did you I, you saw that one too? Yeah, yeah. love Disobedience. That's actually been my favorite highlight of, of the. Of the so I that one was really good. Yeah, really good. And I thought Rachel Vice and Rachel McAdams and were, were both very powerful. I thought Rachel McAdams is probably the best thing she's done. And I mean, I thought she was very great in like Spotlight. And, and obviously, she's will always be like Regina George. And I just feel like, but well, this is the best thing she's done. And um, I felt its length a few times. Like, I just felt like at two hours, we kind of just dragged a little bit. But, I mean, it does not take away from how powerful that movie is. Yeah, no, definitely. I Actually, the performances were kind of what bogged me down about it. I think there was something about... I, I mean, they were just just kind of 
there wasn't that much to their expressions throughout. I just felt like they were kind of just pursing their lips and giving each other sultry stares. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought the directing was incredible. I, like, I was so compelled throughout. Um, so yeah, I guess we were sort of opposite because I did not feel the length and was <laughs> really drawn into the story. And it's, it's just such an interesting world, um, Orthodox Judaism. And I feel like there's been kind of a movement towards that you know scene that story um with Menashe and one of us did you see mm, either of those ones I didn't see one of us so Menashe yeah um so that's really interesting and I'm and I'm Jewish and it sort of resonated with me although I'm not particularly religious but it is just a really interesting story about family and um and how that plays into the orthodox Jewish, Jewish community I thought what was interesting about it, and I just don't want to give too much away, but like the, in the Rachel McAdams performance, it's like you, you know, you feel her being pulled between the loyalty to the religion, and I mean, it is about this relationship between her and Rachel Vice. So you, and you feel, you feel the push and pull there. So I think that is what. I think Rachel McAdams is kind of like the great disruptor of the movie. She kind of shows up. She was, you know, she's separated herself or has been ex- excommunicated Rachel by the religion. Vice. Rachel Vice, yes, yeah. and uh, I feel Rachel McAdams has a little more to do with like the kind of push pull in there. Yeah, Rachel Vice kind of knows what she wants, knows what she is, and but I mean, Rachel Vice is always great, but um, so that's why I was kind of drawn. I was more interested in like the, the complexity of Rachel McAdams' character. Right. No, that completely makes sense. Also, I should say, we are in the lobby of a uh, cinema right now in Chelsea, which is why there's a little bit of background noise. All the press screenings are here. All the press screenings are surrounded by press. <laughs> um, but yeah, just trying to get this in, in between our screenings. Um, but yeah, so other ones that you've seen that you really liked? I uh, today I saw in a relationship, and so that one was. It's just one of those movies that it was just like it was like comfort food early in the morning. You know, it's this this like millennial follows this millennial millennial relationships, and the main couple played by Emma Roberts and uh, Michael. I can never say his last name. Agri- Agrinano. You'd know him if you saw him, kind of thing. Um, so they. They've been. It seems like they've been together for some time, and they. She wants to like move in and kind of like tries not to be like the nagging girlfriend, but like that's what he takes it as. Like she was like, "Well, it makes sense. Like I stay here." She's like trying to be practical about it or whatnot, and so you know they kind of go on a break to see. You. But then like they they have like the secondary characters are um, his friend, their friend Matt and her cousin, and they start a relationship. And honestly, they were more interesting to me. Oh, I, okay, yeah. I kind of cared more about them than I did like the main couple. Mm-hmm. And while, so like the movie kind of splits between like the two of them but like it's very clear that like these the, like Emma Roberts and Michael Agronano I apologize I can never say his name um, they're like our main focus but I felt like the secondary characters were one more but, you know it's kind of been there done that kind of stuff but like it was like a 930 screening it was just it was easy it was fun it was funny it was sharp you know it had some good one liners and um, so I enjoyed that one today I also saw Duck Butter I haven't seen it yet, but I'm seeing it next week. Okay, so I didn't love that one. I've, and I don't want to say too much about it right. before you see it, but um, I think it's kind of like an interesting idea in terms of this, this um, these girls meet at a... Uh, concert and they you know kind of strike up a relationship they go home with each other then they they kind of ponder the idea of like what if you know we spend 24 hours together like being honest truthful having sex on the hour and like it just kind of you kind of watch how that progresses but it just kind of spins its spins its wheels a little too much and like it just kind of after a while was like we get it we get it so that one that one I felt a little like tired by before it was even over. Yeah, oh, that's the worst feeling. Yeah. I so Laia Costa who co-stars in that movie with Alia Shawkat. Is she in Victoria? Did she's she yep, she's in, okay, she's in the, the one take her. Victoria, yes. yep. And she was also in Drake uh Dormus's last movie, Newness, which I haven't seen yet, but his his movie Zoe is the centerpiece of um, okay. of this festival. But Laia I also saw in a movie called Maine, which is also at the festival, so she has two movies here. What was that? It's it's I'm mixed on it. I'm very mixed, and I'm still kind of trying to process. Um, it's it's slow and simple, and it's not trying to be anything that it's not. I mean, it really is just Thomas Mann and Laia Costa as hikers, um, and basically trying. And Maine is kind of their the ultimate. You know, like we're going to make it to Maine, to Maine, and um, yeah, and they just kind of fool around. They're they're not in a relationship, but um, there's obvious sexual tension. Mm. Um, they have a really kind of this great rapport and this intimacy that's really palpable, and so their dynamic really works. Um, but Laia Costa's character just feels a little bit like the secret of damaged 
woman, you know, the, a little bit man picks your dream girlish, mm-hmm. basically, which is also what I have heard about duck butter. Mm-hmm. But I'm so maybe I'll, I'll go into that a little bit tainted, and I don't <laughs> want that to happen. But yeah, so that kind of that was always bothersome. Um, and so when a character's written like that, I mean, you can't really do much. Yeah, I mean, she's like really good and she embodies it, but. It's just hard when that's what the character's background is. Yeah, yeah, and I mean she's very good. Her and uh, Elias Scalcat are very, uh, very, both very good in this and very convincing in what they do. And it was nice to see Leia Costa again because just Victoria was like, I just thought Victoria was amazing. Okay. And um, so it, the, 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 they have a very good chemistry. They have a believable chemistry, and they're good together. Just it's kind of just. Like I said, it just kind of spins its wheels, and um, so I mean, nothing great, nothing terrible. Kind of, yeah. it was just one of those. My my main go to is just kind of left with a shrug, mm-hmm. and so um, the other one. Did you? So we were both at Sundance, and mm-hmm. did you see Miss Education of Cameron Post? Yes, I did. Did you see it at Sundance? I did. So I didn't get to see that at Sundance, but I saw it here, and um, that was good. That was. Uh, I, I did feel like there were that one kind of felt like it plateaus in the middle like I, we're just kind of going through the date the motions of that one yeah. but i mean chloe grace moretz is amazing in it and um i, I that was really powerful and frustrating and i mean they're yeah. so it's about gay conversion and they're at the at a, she's sent to a camp after she's um she's caught uh in the back seat of on prom night with her her female friend um quinn shepherd who played by quinn shepherd who made a splash year last year with blame mm-hmm. and um so, I don't know. That was just, it was just frustrating. This camp, like, you're trying to fix people. Like, these people don't need to be fixed. And so it was just, it was just frustrating. You felt that. I don't know. What did you think Yeah, about I, to be honest, I wasn't that enamored with the movie. I really, it felt sort of flat to me. I feel like I didn't I care about the characters. Um, they didn't, yeah, they didn't come alive for me. Especially mm. Sasha Lane's character and, um, the guy, you know, the, so yeah. so when she goes to the camp, she makes these two best friends, and they yeah. become kind of a trio of rebels in the camp, and like trying to disrupt things, and obviously don't believe in the in the conversion therapy. Um, but yeah, none of them really. I, I know that I was supposed to care about them, and I just didn't, which is always an issue. Right. I think Lori Grace. Um, I think her performance carries that through for me. But I agree. I just kind of like all kind of ring overall kind of ring flat like I thought it was good I thought it was I thought it was very solid yeah. very uh, it's very straightforward uh, uh, in its direction but like I thought it was a very solid movie I think that I feel like that it kind of like it was like wanted to slap all these counselors I feel like that kind of like you know kind of gets to you so it's like um I guess that meant something that it was working and whatnot mm-hmm. I do like Sasha Lane I want to see her get better roles because I think that um I love American Honey. Did you see American Honey? Mm-hmm. And she, yeah. I thought she was amazing oh, in that. And she was, like, such a fine in that. So I do want her to see, you know, she's kind of been getting these, like, like secondary roles. Like, I mean, she was in Hearts Beat Loud at... Um, I didn't see that, but yeah. I loved it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I actually just got some hate on Twitter for liking that movie. <laughs> um, right. Someone, like, called I love, out... I love Terzy Clemens. I mean, like, that, that's... There seemed like that would be kind of a dream team. So, it, it was so good. Her and Nick Offerman in that movie. So I saw that at Sundance and just randomly, like, woke up to, like... Twitter hate for liking that movie. (laughs) Um, Film Threat got name checked for giving a good review to that movie. Oh my gosh. Um, That's a good thing. Yeah. (laughs) Good thing for us. Um, The other interesting one I saw was called Slut in a Good Way. Oh yeah. Shot in black and white. It's a French Canadian film shot in black and white and it's just about this this girl gets dumped by her boyfriend who comes out to her and then uh, she's heartbroken and she she's got two best friends and then the the way they get over this is that she they apply to a toy store because they just are enamored with all the guys there and um, she just kind of starts hooking up with everyone at the toy store and it's like you know, it's about female friendships and whatnot. And obviously, I can't be an expert on that, but I just thought it was really kind of a fun, quick movie. Um, you know, it's one of those like eighty-nine minute movies that you're like, you don't really have eighty-nine minutes of material. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought it was kind of funny, and it was, it, it was. I love a good black and white movie. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. set modern day, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. that was that one was pretty interesting. That's cool. What about you? What else have you seen? Uh, I had forgotten that my other favorite movie God, I liked a bunch of ones that I've seen uh, it's been a good crop this year it's been pretty good um, I really liked Mary Shelley and I mm. uh, yeah I hadn't really heard much about her or heard missed things and I think it had been sort of in pre or post for like a long time mm. you know you've been hearing about this movie for so long but um, it's about Mary Shelley obviously who wrote Frankenstein and uh, starring Elle Fanning and it's 
uh, yeah, it just really felt like a really beautiful movie. And I think that Elle Fanning is just like a really great actress and she's magnetic on screen. So I honestly would follow her to any movie. Um, but it, I loved the story. I think that this, her, the story of her life is, is just incredibly rich and compelling. I mean, she wrote Frankenstein when she was 18 and it's based on these relations or partially inspired by, uh, you know, her relationship with her kind of volatile husband um, and her father who is an author and she's sort of living in his shadow and her mom who died um, giving birth to her. So it was a great story to see played out and it's, it's incredibly cinematic and it kind of uh, a kind of a classical way. I mean, it just, it feels very classical and, and cinematic. I think I had that one in my schedule to go see and I forgot what I swapped it out for because I did <laughs> want to see that. I think that was at Sundance too. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to, I, I want to say t- when I got Tully tickets, I was like, I got Tully. Yeah. <laughs> just because <laughs> to me, that's such a dream team, those three. So I will catch that one when it comes out. Um, and I agree about Elle Fanning. She's uh, got one this summer. Alan for our site just reviewed out of um, San Francisco, How to Talk to Girls at Parties. Which so I, also has, uh, so, no, it does not have, does that have Sasha Lane in it? No. I don't I think mean, so. I don't think so. Um, I don't know who the, like, the young cast is, but I know Nicole Kimmons in it um, and Al Fanning, but I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Um, I saw another one. Just, that's the thing about film festivals. You see them, like, one right after another. They kind of, like, blend together a little bit, so I try to take notes a little bit. Right. Um, Blue Knight with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, that one... Uh, based on Cleo from Five to Seven, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> rip off, yeah, um, and having like just developed a massive crush on Agnes Varda over the award season of Faces Places. Did you see Faces I mean, Places? I am Agnes Varda's biggest fan on earth. I'm the president of the Agnes Varda fan club. <laughs> I, I I bow down to you because I just did you see Faces Places? Okay. Um, no, I, mean, I never caught it, which is embarrassing because I'm her biggest fan and I, sort of went through the award season being like, faces, places must win without having seen it. <laughs> I, well, I saw, I didn't see Icarus, which one, and I like, and mad at it because it'd be faces, places. But I only saw faces, places because it was like an 80 minute movie that I could fit in while I was in like in between movies at TIFF. And I just fell in love with this documentary. So, yes, this is a Agnes, Agnes Varda ripoff. And it's just. It's probably my least favorite movie I saw here because it's just so dull and on she so it just starts with her getting the um the news that she's got a brain tumor and she's got if she has surgery it gets her about 14 months and so we kind of just watch her stroll through Manhattan and like kind of reconcile with herself but like she doesn't like let anyone in and she's kind of like occasionally insufferable and her you know um her mom is played by Jacqueline Bissett and she's waiting in her apartment for her and she's like just kind of dodging her mother and like she's got a daughter which she kind of you know it seems like there's a solid enough relationship but like nothing strong because uh she's a the uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's character is a singer so she travels a lot Mm -hmm. and she's coming out with a new album and going on tour and it's just this like really kind of like moody but uninteresting character piece like in the third act Renee Zellweger pops up for like one scene as like her like friend and they catch up and like adds like such a spark to this movie because Mm -hmm. we're like we need Renee Zellweger back and (laughs) I just and this movie makes that case so because apparently she's playing um Judy Garland later this year. Oh. That like a still just kind of came out of nowhere that she was playing Judy Garland. Wow. So I mean, we might she might be back in the awards race, but like um, she kind of yeah she adds like a, a a little too late spark to this movie. It was just it was just so hard to like get into anything like there like nothing in Parker's performance, nothing in the screenplay or like makes you feel like you should feel devastated for this character and you just kind of don't and I think that's a problem because you know she she had this tragic uh, diagnosis and then and then it just kind of like we're just kind of watch her reconcile with it by herself and not really I mean she has the closest relationship she had the person she lets in the most is her Lyft driver and that like that's kind of interesting because like this you let this stranger in more than anybody else but yeah. but it doesn't really do anything with that and like it would be interesting if it explored why why isn't she telling her her daughter's father or her daughter or her mother so yeah there's nuggets of something there, but it just didn't really it didn't really come to fruition for me. Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting. I mean, that just made me think again of Tully because she that Charlize's character in the movie Marlo, it does she can't feels like she can't really kind of talk to anybody. Mm. Um, and then the night nanny comes along and all of a sudden it's like finally I have someone I've never told these things to before, blah blah blah. You know, it's like someone that she can open up to. So sometimes it does it really does work to have like a stranger come in and you're like, Okay, this is somebody that I've all of a sudden feel mm 
like I can let in and um, will be able to understand me and access me. But if does not seems like it doesn't make sense in, in this movie where it just doesn't really work. No, it's like it's like one scene she like kind of like opens up to her Lyft driver and it's just and then that was it and it's just yeah that it just that that was one of those things. If it was like at the end of the day, I probably would have left because but it was like in the middle of the day, so like I still had movies after and um, try not to leave, but. I did yesterday at one. Ooh, what, what was that one? Really um, you shall not sleep, and it was this like <laughs> uh, Spanish horror movie. Like it sounded kind of interesting, but like I looked at my watch and it was like forty five minutes left, and I was like, I just do not care. Like it was my last movie of the day. And I was just like, and I really don't leave movies ever. Like I've sat through some awful stinkers, like as we all have, but like. I just was like, I just don't care. I'm not paying attention. Like, even if I wrote about it for us, like, I would not have been able to write anything interesting because, or constructive, because I just felt like I wasn't paying attention. Totally. No, yeah, I actually have a hard and fast rule with myself that I never leave a movie, and I'm always kind of surprised when I hear people do, because I'm like, well, it could come together in the last act. I felt so um, guilty. But yeah, but... no, 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 I'm not, <laughs> not chastising you, Dory. Right? But I think that is, I mean, that's just kind of also, like, a symptom of being at a film festival yeah. and being so exhausted yeah. and running around. Although, Tribeca is different for me because I live here in, in Brooklyn, um, so it doesn't it hasn't felt you know the same as it does when I you know where I, was at Sundance or South by where you're kind of in the hub of the festival mm. the whole time you know I'm just sort of like get, going about my life and then trying to catch movies in between. But how has it been for you? What's it? How has it been navigating? Oh, pretty good. I mean, I did it last year. I, I had been over the years. I've been like like to gotten tickets to like public screenings while last year I did it as press and then this is my second year doing this and I mean I've got friends in the city so like I kind of catch up with people in between movies but like Does I mean it feel different than the other like than, than a Sundance or something it's, it feels a lot less busy because like I mean so th- this past year or this year was my first Sundance and it was like I need to see every movie that's playing so I left like seeing like like 17 18 movies in the couple days I was there and um, I just uh, here it's just kind of like I'm going to spend the, after- the I'm going to get it to the Chelsea Theater at 9 o'clock. I'll stay till 3 when press screenings end, and then I hang out with my friend at night. So it's like a little more, this is a much more casual, right. um, a casual festival, but um, yeah. it's good for, you know, finding like little discoveries. Like last year I saw, I was I was all set on my Sunday morning one being the trip to Spain. I, like, I love the trip series, um, but I, at the last minute I was like, this might be permission. Like, I don't really know what it's about, but I like Dan Stevens from The Guest, especially from The Guest, and uh, I love Rebecca Hall and everything she does. And so I was like, I just kind of wanted to do it, and it was so charming, and it was so, um, again, something you've seen a million times before, but just so well done. So I think, like, it's just kind of good. Like, I didn't really know what half the movies I was seeing was about. Like, yesterday when I went into Stockholm, I had no idea what it was about. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, a couple things, like, I made sure I wanted to see. Like, I wanted to see Disobedience. I, had, I knew it played TIFF last year, and I didn't see it there. And uh, I wanted to see Miseducation of Cameron Post because it won Sundance, and I didn't see it there. Yeah. So, like, a couple things I knew I wanted to see, but then it was just kind of like whatever fits into my schedule and then like hopefully something surprises you because I think that's the best part of film festivals definitely that's exactly how I felt at South by 2 I would go into I would just say what's playing and I write during this you know jock of t- block of time that I have free which is which is a great feeling did you see Hereditary? no I did not see Hereditary to be honest it was playing so late that I, <laughs> I was like I can't stay up till 3am that, sun- that was Sundance for me it was like oh. Oh, when we had our Sundance party uh, film threat party at Sundance it was literally premiering at the theater next door and then like I was just like, oh my god, I don't even want to talk to a publicist. Let's see if I can get in because like it was like a midnight, and I was like, I just my eyes hurt. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that one. The buzz has been insane for it. I know it's an A24. Yeah, and I, yeah. I love any. I mean, anything A24 does, it's like you know at least it's gonna at least starts off at okay. <laughs> right. I mean, my mo is being the sole uh, hater of, or not let's not say hater, a detractor of A24 because I don't. I think that the the way that they have branded themselves is kind of annoying to me. It's, it's grating, and I think it's sort of exclusive and a little bit haughty, you know, patronizing. I can see that, but, like, also, like, I love a lot of what they do, so I just, well, I, 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 I'm i I'm in the I'm in the A24 camp. I know. I, well, that's a paradox, because, I, yeah, I love their movies, of course. Yeah. I just, I think that their, their brand has become a little bit problematic for me but them and neon i just i feel like anything they put out i just uh, i at least i'm interested in because they're i think they're both doing really they're putting out really smart independent movies and i think that in this day of like avengers 1 to 32 i think like, that's important to still see these movies like avengers and all that stuff is fun but i like things like neon that um 
take chance chances with like daring movies in A24. So, you know, A24, I mean, Neon got into like the awards race with Itania, but like in A24, obviously won with Moonlight. But I, I think they still just champion, you know, kind of obscure, small movies. And, you know, I, I think they are letting them grow. So I think that's, yeah. the, I think that's a plus. I totally get what you're saying, but I think that's like, I think that's what I like about them. No, definitely. A24, yeah. And they've been so successful. I mean, yeah. when when uh, Lenny was nominated for, Lenny Abramson for Room, that was kind of a huge deal. Mm. Nobody thought that he was going to be nominated for Best Director. Um, and that, that was just like a huge success on uh, Triumph for A24. And that was only one of their first years, kind yeah. of. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and Neon I'm really excited about, too. I, I was honestly really happy when Neon, when I heard about Neon, because I was like, great, someone can finally challenge A24, yeah. <laughs> take them off a little bit of their high horse. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And at the end of the day, it's really who's putting out good movies. So yeah. um, I think a lot of things I saw here have distribution already. So I don't think it's a huge buyer's market here, but because um, I think a lot of things just premiere here. Um, so, yeah, it's been interesting. Any other couple movies you've seen or are you going through the week? Yeah, so since I... Sort of been spreading them out a little bit more, um, t- taking it a little bit more leisurely since I'm since I live here and can go through the week. Yeah. What are you looking? For, what are you looking forward to? Oh goodness. Um, let's see. I'm seeing Duck Butter, uh, Little Woods looks really interesting oh, with, with yeah. Tessa Thompson. Yeah. Um, seeing that tonight. Uh, I'm seeing Zoe, which is the Drake Dorham okay. movie tomorrow, which I don't I don't really know anything about. And Me neither, yeah. yeah, but I um and I didn't see his last two. You know, I didn't see Equals or Newness, but. I haven't seen anything of his since like crazy. Uh, like crazy. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen anything since like crazy. Right. Oh, I forget his second. The, what his second one was called, but yeah, he's a he's a interesting. Mm. He's been kind of pumping them out with yeah. like big stars. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that you are running off to another screening, so yeah, I'm off to uh, the Seagull. Oh. Yeah. That looks interesting. <laughs> Period pieces aren't really like my thing, but I was like, I'm here. Sir Sharonin and that Benning. Like the ca- that cast is incredible. Yeah. That lineup, amazing. Yeah, and like that that's enough to get me there. So Sony Pictures Classics putting that out um, I think next month. Mm-hmm. So that's they're just choosing a premiere here. So I'm I'm excited for that one. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, Thanks for listening. Um, so we, I guess we can share our handles. Um, you can follow me at Natalia Wink, W-I-N-K-E. And um, obviously all our reviews will be up on site for Tribeca. And I'm Matt Pasatino at Matt Pasatino. Thanks, Matt. It was really great talking to you. you. Too.